Hi, welcome to the instructional video for Water Snake's universal electric motor mount for kayaks. Today we'll show you how to fit all the parts to your kayak and then how to operate once you're on the water. This Paintington design is made exclusively for the Water Snake T18 and T24 electric motors. This universal three axle design will fit just about any kayak. So let's head to the workshop to show you how it all fits together. Today, with a few simple tools, we're going to show you how to remove this motor head so we can slide off this transom mount bracket and replace it with our kayak bracket. Once you've taken the motor out of the box, first thing to do is pull on this black toggle to release the handle. And next, remove the four screws at the base of the motor head. Raise the lid ever so slightly. You won't be able to take it all the way off because there's wires attached, which we'll remove in the next step. Looking at it from the other side, we need to disconnect the three wires that enter the motor head from the main shaft. For your own reference, make sure you take a photo of the wires before you start any of the work. As well as a photo, it's always a good idea to mark where the wires come from so you remember where to put them back. So with the blue wire going in here, I'll mark with two dashes to match the two dashes at the front of the motor. With the black wire going to the back, I'll make one dash to match with the one dash at the front of the motor. I won't worry about marking the bottom one because there'll only be one in that group missing. So with the blue wire, you may need to pinch down the locking lever before you remove the clip. With the black wire, reach into the back, pull down firmly and remove the black wire. And then do the same with the red wire. If the bottom wire is too hard to get at, remove a few of the other wires but just make sure you mark them to remember where each one goes. Loosen off the silver plates so the wires are free to slide underneath it when we remove the motor head. Again, take a quick photo of the silver brackets to make sure you know where the wires are going. The last step is to come back underneath the motor head and remove this bolt here. Just be careful of the retention nut on the other side. Once all those steps are done, you can now remove the motor head. Careful to pull those wires through. And then unlock, loosen, and remove the transom mount bracket. So here are the two parts that we're sliding over the motor shaft. We have our jack body, and we have our steer locker unit. Now take note that the wing nut is at the base of the collar. So keep that towards the bottom when sliding it onto the shaft. Feed the wires through the bottom ring of the jack body. Then feed your steer locker unit on. Take note to keep the extrusion towards the jack body. Then feed your wires through the top hole. This is how it should look once you've attached the jack body and the steer locker unit to the shaft. The next step is to reattach the motor head. So feed the wires back up through the base of the motor head and push the motor head down onto the motor head shaft. Make sure that the hole for the bolt lines up. You can see the shaped recess for the nut. Make sure to refer back to your photos to double check that these wires are coming back through the locking plate in the same place. And once everything's in position, make sure that all the screws are fully tightened up as well. Next step is to reattach all the wires, making sure to reference your photo and the markings you made earlier. This is a very important step to make sure that you don't damage the motor. Okay, there, all done. Just double check that all the wires with your markings are going back to the same spot. Once the wires are connected, pull down on this toggle and retract the handle back into its place to make sure that none of the wires get caught. Next step is to reattach the motor head cover and secure it in place with the four screws. If you're having trouble attaching the motor head cover, these two wires, your power supply cables, can be gently moved to give you some more room. Before moving on, check the handle retraction a few times to make sure that none of the wires are jamming. Before moving on, we need to connect the motor to a battery source to make sure that all the functions are working okay. As always, when connecting power, connect the negative first. Forward, reverse, second speed, forward, reverse, all working. So once it's all working, make sure to disconnect the power. And as always, when disconnecting, positive first, then negative. The steer handle unit consists of these three parts. 
which we'll attach now. So set up the depth adjust unit with the steer handle. It's important to note that this will control the depth of which the propeller is in the water. The handle screws directly into the locking nut. Make sure that it's tight and secure. When assembling, make sure that your steering handle is always above the jack body. To adjust the depth, loosen off the handle, slide it down to the required depth and then tighten it firmly. Once you've figured out where you want the motor to go, it's time to mount your bracket. Here we found a nice smooth flat spot. Bear in mind the bracket can handle any curvature up to 25 degrees, but ideally the flatter the better. Next step is to mark out where the four holes need to be drilled. Before you do that, check to make sure that you can access the underside of where you're drilling the bracket. Most kayaks should have a center or rear hatch that should enable this access. So mark out your four holes. Be very careful to make sure the bracket doesn't move while you're marking out the holes. So as you can see, we've got our four clearly marked holes ready for drilling. You really want the bolts to have a nice tight fit through these holes, so I recommend a 5mm drill bit. So drill the four holes. So next step is to assemble the main bracket. You have the base plate, the rotating disc, and the center bolt. You'll receive an Allen key with the bracket, however, don't tighten it just yet, that's for later. So you want to leave this loose so you can rotate this disc. So when mounting the bracket, make sure that this black spacer is between the bracket and the hull. So the next step is to thread the bolts through the holes in the bracket with the black spacers underneath. And now you're ready to put them into your kayak. So start by placing your places over the holes, the flat parts facing out. Then start with one of your bolts Slide it into the hole, make sure that all the others are lined up, and away you go. It's best to make sure that they're tight to give you a nice, strong, snug fit. So on the inside of the kayak, we're going to place a washer, a nut, and then a second nut to really lock it into place. If you like, you can always add a bigger washer at the start of it to really give you a more secure fit into that plastic. So we've secured the bracket with the bolts. If you're worried about any water intrusion, you can use a marine sealant on the holes. This patented design is fantastic as it has an angled swivel disc that rotates 360 degrees and two brackets that slot in on either side. They too can also move anywhere around this disc. This creates infinite angle possibilities to ensure that you get the best position for your motor. To make the rest of the assembly easier, once you get the brackets into position, you can lock them off with these bolts here. The next step is to attach these two sleeve brackets together by using these long bolts. The nut recess means you don't need any extra tools, so you can tighten them by hand. This patented three axle design allows this point here to pivot, the disc to pivot, the jack bar also rotates within this design. So in combination, the three axle universal design is suitable on most kayaks. So now the fine tuning begins with the position of the disc, the angle of the sleeve brackets and the rotation of the jack bar. What you're aiming to achieve is this setup to allow your motor shaft to be as perpendicular to the water surface as possible. Another great feature is that once you're happy with the setup, you can loosen off these bars here, slide your jack bar out, so your bracket is left in perfect position for when you get to the water. Now that you've got your kayak on the water, it's time to make those final adjustments to make sure that your jack bar is horizontal to the water and that your motor shaft is perpendicular to the water. This motor position is crucial to make sure that the propeller is in the best position relative to your hull to allow for better steering and better drive through the motor. One adjustment you should make sure to do is to get your motor shaft as close to the kayak as possible to give you better steering and performance. To adjust the depth, loosen off the handle, slide the collar up, tighten it off, then reach down here and lower it in. 
For free steering movement, keep your steering locker unit loose to allow greater mobility. Keep your hand on the tiller at all times. Increase the tension to your desired level by tightening the steering locker unit. If you wish to fix it in the one place, take your steering locker unit, slide it to the very top and tighten it off. Once you're up and running, it's as simple as left or right and enjoy the freedom of not having to paddle. To stow the motor, loosen off the jack bar, pivot, slide the motor back, twist it into you, then fix it in position with the steering lock unit. So there you go. If you need any more information on the water snake brackets, head to watersnake.com.au.